Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is about solving a common problem that I've found on the Linux desktop, and it has to do with theming. I don't know about you, but if you've used Linux on the desktop for any period of time, you'll have come across this issue where a bunch of apps look different depending on what widget set or what uh, environment they were developed for. For example, if you are using a GNOME based desktop, a lot of the apps that you have installed by default on your GNOME based desktop will be uh, made using the GTK widget library. And that means that all of those apps that use the GTK library will theme themselves appropriately. They all look like they belong together because they're all drawing their widget set from the same theme information. But the problem is what happens when you add a application that was designed for the KDE Plasma desktop using Qt? Well, then we start to have issues. So for example, uh, Digicam, fantastic photo library management software that I love using. They just had an awesome new release in version seven. It uses the Qt library to create the look and the feel of the application itself. Now, without any customization, it looks like it doesn't belong here in a GNOME desktop. The same can also be said for running GTK apps in the KDE Plasma desktop. So the problem we're gonna try and solve today is how can we theme all of our apps, no matter what they use appropriately, so that all the apps look like they belong on our desktop. This is not a one stop shop when it comes to solutions, but I'm gonna try and give you a few tools to make it a little bit better. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that already I have uh, got the theming going on here for Digicam and uh, for other Qt based uh, applications. Um, with the exception of Caden Live, which is the video editor that I use on the regular, and for some reason it still likes to do its own thing. It kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. Anyway, that's a fringe case. All right, let's break this down into some actionable steps. Now, I am not the best when it comes to tutorials. I've kind of shied away from them on this channel, um, but this is something that I feel pretty strongly about. If you want to have a desktop that feels like it belongs together and all of the apps that you install and you run look similar, then here are some steps that you can do to try and make that work for you. Step number one, you need to go and install Covantum. Covantum, or at least I think that's how you say it, is a, a handy little tool that allows you to change uh, the theming and the theming engine of any application that was developed with the Qt uh, frameworks. What I mean by this is that if you have any apps that are made predominantly for KDE, then you can force that particular app to use a theme that is commonly used in the GTK world. So for this segment, I'm going to be referring to a fantastic article by Linux Uprising. They've got a lot of great information on this website if you're looking to tweak things, but specifically speaking, let's talk about Covantum. So what Covantum does is it basically hijacks the theming engine for any Qt 4 and Qt 5 software, and then will direct it to whatever theme that you request. Uh, now it does this by uh, doing some good wizardry with SVG styles. And so it makes it very, very flexible. In fact, it makes the end result of the theming look so much better than these crossover theming predecessors that existed on the Linux desktop. We're gonna get pretty deep in the weeds here today. So the first step that you need to do is actually go out and install Covantum. Now, the interesting thing here is that you need to install both the uh, Qt 5 style for Covantum, as well as the Covantum themes and the Covantum app itself. Now, depending on what Linux distribution you're running, one command might pull in all of those, uh, and then on other distributions, you might have to install each of those things separately. But you still need all three of those things, the Covantum app itself, the Qt 5 style, so that basically anytime 
that the desktop draws on a Qt5 framework to render the application, it can point it towards the theme that Kvantum wants to use. So on Ubuntu, for me, it's a sudo apt install Qt5-style-Kvantum and then the Qt5-style-Kvantum-themes. Now, thankfully, it's included in the repositories of the latest Ubuntu-based releases, and you can, of course, find it on Fedora, Manjaro, Solus, etc. If you've got an older release of Ubuntu, you do need to add a PPA. Right, once we've got all that sorted, what that'll give you is the flexibility to theme any of the Qt5 or Qt4-based apps on your desktop. So you can add external themes if you find something that you like down the track, it gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to use great themes developed by the community. But the good news is it also comes with a lot of popular themes pre-installed by default. So the adapter, ambience, arc, and all of the other ones that you've probably seen before are all here preloaded into Kvantum. You'll know that they're there because they've got the KV prefix before them. So once you've selected the corresponding theme to the theme that you're running in wider GNOME, which you can double check by looking in tweaks. By the way, GNOME tweaks is uh, the best way that you can change the theme in your GNOME desktop as a whole. Um, and that's available by just going and installing GNOME-tweaks from whatever software manager you have. Go to appearance and you'll see the themes in the drop down menus here. Now you notice I've set mine to add waiter. There's a reason for that, I'll get into it soon. But you just pick the corresponding one that is the closest to whatever it is your theme that you're currently running is, and you'll get a pretty decent uh, theme that looks pretty much the same whether you're running a Qt 5 application or whether you are running a GTK 3 application. Long story short, all your apps should look about the same, which is what we want. Now, there's one big caveat with this whole process. And that is that unfortunately, due to the sandboxed nature of universal packaging systems such as Snap, App Images, and Flatpak, none of those applications are going to respect the, the theme engine that Kvantum has set up. What this means is that while GTK-based applications will respect, for the most part, the theme that you have set in your GNOME desktop, whether that is a snap package, a flat pack or otherwise, when it comes to Qt5 applications that are installed via flat pack or snaps, by default, they will not respect the theming that you have set. So that's the next thing that we need to fix. So first of all, go and look up the desktop integration documentation on flat pack. I've left a link in the description below. Uh, here's what you need to do. It gives you some brief instructions for how to install various themes for GTK and themes for the Qt uh, framework. Now, in particular, there are two commands right here that you need to use if you're going to get Qt-based applications to respect the theming that is on your GNOME desktop. You'll need to install the KDE KStyle Add Waiter and also the KDE Platform theme Q Gnome Platform. What this will do is it will then point all of the KDE or Qt based applications to the Gnome Platform theme, in particular Add Waiter. Unfortunately, at least to my knowledge, this theming is only limited to Add Waiter, meaning that, for example, I have a Qubit Torrent installed here uh, on my system. I've installed it using Flatpak, and as you can see, for a Qt based application, it actually looks pretty darn native here with the AdWaiter theming. It's got the AdWaiter icons, it's got the uh, color scheme, the widget style, all of that looks consistent with the rest of my desktop. That's because I've just installed the two KDE styles for all of my sandboxed Flatpak apps. So it kind of does mean you're stuck with the AdWaiter theme when it comes to cute applications in Flatpak. Now the news is a lot better if you are using GTK apps from the uh, from Flathub or from Flatpaks. Basically, there are a bunch of themes that are already available as Flatpaks uh, on Flathub. So even if I just search the GTK themes, you can see there are a bucket load already here from all the big players and from all of uh, the major desktop themes that exist. Just installing one of these themes uh, will enable it 
and uh, and whenever you select that theme for your entire desktop, whatever Flatpak apps you have installed that use GTK will also use that theme. I believe even with recent versions of Flatpak, these themes will automatically br be brought in if the system detects that you have one of these themes enabled on your desktop, which is awesome. Now, when it comes to Snap, packages, we need to do a similar thing. Again, I'm going to reference a fantastic article by Joey over at OMG Ubuntu, and that is around uh, making sure that we have installed Snap themes from the Snap store. Again, this will allow the sandboxed apps from Snapcraft to then reach in and grab the right theme so that your desktop looks consistent. Now, again, for GTK based apps, you've got a lot more flexibility than for cute apps because Unfortunately, there isn't any option at all to theme cute apps on a GNOME-based desktop. Take VLC Media Player, for example. Very popular program. Uh, as you can see, the theming is pretty much garbage for the Snap version of VLC. This is because VLC is written as a cute-based application, and it does not know what to do with the theming here. Now, it's possible that you could actually fix this by going in and installing the, the AdWaiter Plasma style somewhere in Snap, but I don't know if it's available. On the flip side, when we look at the Flatpak version of VLC, you'll notice the differences. So here we have the Flatpak version and you can see the menus, the fonts, all of that stuff has carried over. The widget set has carried over on Flatpak. It's just one of those drawbacks of snap packages. So two good snaps to make sure that you have installed so all of your themes work appropriately. If I just go to my installed snaps section, you'll notice that there are two packages, gtk-common-themes and also gtk2-common-themes. Um, both of these packages just install uh, basically a highlight reel of all of the popular themes that are out there. For the Linux desktop, you can see these two packages here. They draw in a lot of both the GTK and the icon themes that a lot of uh, applications um, or a lot of desktops use. So themes like Elementary and Yaru and the Mint themes and all of that kind of stuff. So that the Snap packages look at home on GTK based desktops. Now, I don't know what the situation is on the um, KDE side of things. That'll probably be a separate video, but a lot of the theming on KDE in general is actually easier than what it is on GTK based desktops such as GNOME. Now, the funny thing about me and Snaps is that most of the applications that I have here installed via Snaps are all apps that have their own theming set anyway. A vast majority of them are written with Electron or, uh, or have their own little thing going on. But as a good example, Zernal++ is a GTK app, I believe, I could be wrong about that, but at least it looks pretty much uh, close to native with the uh, application menus and all of that kind of thing. And that about covers us. What we have as an end result is a desktop that uses consistent theming across all of its applications. Whether you have a Qt 5 based application, whether you have a GTK based application, and whether it's installed via Snap, Flatpak, native packages, or something else, uh, hopefully all of your apps should look about the same. Let me know if this was helpful for you down in the comments below. It would be great to see desktops keep making consistent strides towards improving the default theming situation. And I do want to say that if having consistent app theming is super important to you, I will definitely say it's way easier to get that on KDE Plasma as it is easier just to customize most things in general on Plasma compared to GTK desktops such as GNOME, uh, the Pantheon desktop, and others. Well, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.